Today's COVID update is brought to you by Fultex Systems, your technology center, where you'll come for the price, but stay for the service. And welcome back to Open Your Eyes. It is a lovely Wednesday morning. And we're about to kick start the conversation this morning with uh, the phenomenon that you're seeing right now over our country, which of course is the Saharan dust that is plaguing our weather at this particular time. Now we've got the professional in to talk to us about it. We've got forecaster Ronald Gordon, who is a climatologist at the National Meteorological Service. Forecaster, or uh, how should I refer to you? Ronald, good morning. <laughs> Hi, good morning, John. I tell you what, it's so nice to have you on, sir, because everybody is talking about what's going on with this Saharan dust. First of all, the question is, what is it and where is it coming from? Okay, the Saharan dust is actually, uh, actually originates over the Sahara Desert, as the name suggests. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you have these massive um, dust storms that pick up the dust and bring it up into the atmosphere. Mm. And after that, um, to channel it across the Atlantic, you have what we call the African Easterly Jet. Yeah. Um, the name, as the name suggests, or it's not really a jet, sorry, but actually it's um, a narrow channel of air, a very strong wind that transport this dust across the Atlantic Ocean into our area. Mm. Okay. Now, this is, it seems when you read up on it, um, there were a number of factors that combined for us to be able to have uh, this historic experience right now because uh, the the dust in fact does typically come this way but not with this density and not this far. Can you explain that for us Ronald? Okay Marlene, um, what occurs is that uh, like you said it typically occurs so every um, at least at late spring uh, summer into uh, into fall or it starts around fall mm -hmm. um, the dust originates like I said over Africa and come away but in this particular occasion you had extra massive storms that pick up a lot of dust. And apart from that, um, it appears that the, the easterly jet that normally transported was weak for some time. Mm. So the dust was, allowed, was, was um, able to linger in that area and accumulate. And after that, the, the jet picked up and bring across all this massive amount of dust over our area. And, and the size of it too, the plume itself is really big. It's affecting from the East Caribbean all the way over to our side. Yes, indeed it is. Yeah. Now, in terms of uh, what it what it's doing for the weather, because this it is the hurricane season. You do see a clear if you uh, when we watch the uh, satellite imagery, uh, a clear. Yes, there there is a lot of dust, but in terms of um, the mixing with the clouds, you don't see that much out there. What's going on there? Okay. Um, what occurs is that the dust typically suppresses um, uh, thunderstorm activity. It suppresses. Uh, rain is suppressing hurricane. Mm -hmm. Basically, as the name suggests, uh, it's dust, uh, it's dry, right? Mm -hmm. So it's very warm and dry air. Okay. And what hurricanes need uh, for them to develop is a lot of moisture. Uh, that is what they derive some of their energy from. They pick up that moisture uh, and that, wa that moist, warm moisture, moisture air from over the sea mm -hmm. and eventually they develop and intensify. However, the dust is like, uh, if you want to put it that way, choking out the storms. Oh, so wow. they cannot intensify. There's a lack of moisture in the area. And there's another fa two other factors as well. Um, the very fact that there's a warm air layer over relatively cooler uh, surfaces means that there's more stability. Mm -hmm. That means that the air, the air, the air motion is suppressed. You don't have rising motion, and, and again, that suppresses the storm. And the final factor that um, scientists have come up with is that the the easterly jet itself is a strong uh, area of wind that creates what we call vertical wind shear. Mm -hmm. In that case, the thunderstorms are not able to hold together. They're basically, basically torn apart because of that strong amount of um, vertical wind shear that, that's occurring. No? So the silver lining in this is that it will calm down um, the uh, hurricane season, at least for now. I, I like the last part you said, at least for now. <laughs> this is not going to last forever. Yeah. So we are still expecting an active season. Yeah. But for the moment, at least for the tropical Atlantic, um, the Caribbean Sea, it's going to be a bit calmer. As you can see, there was a storm that formed just, I think, yesterday. That's right. Tropical um, storm Dolly, which was over the northern Atlantic, wow. which has not been affected by the dust. So we are still going to be seeing activity. And also, like I said, this is not going to last throughout the whole hurricane season. So it, it's not a, it shouldn't be a, a reason for people to become complacent and relaxed. Okay. So 
you know, let's talk about the effects of uh, this dust mm -hmm. storm, I mean, the, the Saharan dust. The, in, in some Caribbean islands, they're complaining of poor air quality. What extent um, will we experience here in Belize? I do not expect it to be as severe as the experience as you, as you would expect because they're closer to the source. So, um, like you rightly mentioned, the air quality for them will be a lot, uh, uh, the air quality will be a lot poorer than we would expect here. However, that is not saying that it wouldn't affect our air quality as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. Unfortunately, we do not, at the main service, we do not have um, at our stations, we do not have sensors that monitor air quality. That's something that we're looking going to look into into the future, mm -hmm. but we do not have that at the moment. No, but um, yes, indeed, it does affect the air quality. And in terms of people who are sensitive to, to that type of thing, people mm -hmm. with um, resp respiratory problems, asthmatic people and so on, they could have um, suffer some severe impact from the dust, from the dust, no? Also, people who are allergic, people who have sensitive skin condition and that type of thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I know. The allergies have already started, so we can be aware. And how long are we going to be experiencing the effects? The models that I have been looked at indicate that um, it will continue at least for a week. However, wow. the most intense part of it is going to be this week. Um, and by Friday, it's going to start um, dissipating a bit. Uh -huh. But you will still see the, um, the dust or the slight haze in the air, as we are seeing now, but not as bad. So today it's definitely a bit more intense than yesterday. yesterday yeah. Are we going to continue to see it intensify till Friday or just about this level? I would expect about, it could intensify a bit further and after that by Friday it starts decreasing. Okay, and what, what is the forecast tract of this uh, and can we, can we see it again throughout this, um, this hurricane season as uh, we've got a lot coming off the coast of Africa? Yes, um, well in terms of tracking it, Typically, moves up easterly across the, um, or from east to west across the Atlantic into the Caribbean, and eventually recurves with the with the trade wind flow up into southeast United States, and eventually recurves into the Atlantic. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of the remainder of the season, like I mentioned, yes, it's something that is seasonal, and we expect it to continue at least throughout the summer months, mm. and after that, begin to decrease as we go into um, late September, October. Okay. And what else would you tell people about uh, the dust plume? I know part of what people are talking about is that it should provide um, some very beautiful sunrises and sunsets. Why is that? Okay, the reason why um, it has that effect is because of the, the dust particles in the air tend to scatter the, 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 the rays of the sun. Oh. So it splits it up into the different, um, the different colors within the electromagnetic spectrum. Mm -hmm. So you're able to see the... Um, red colors, the orange colors, and so on, from the sunset and sunrise. Wow. And that occurs in the morning because of the, the direction that the sun is with, relative to the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. There is more um, rays of the sun passing through the, the dust particles, so there's more scattering. Yeah. While throughout the day, like in mid or so, you'll not see that effect. You'll see more of a milky, easy-looking skies because then the, the sun is directly overhead, no? Yeah, you know, and, I, and, and that's exactly where I wanted to go in terms of the word haze, because when we think about haze, we think about, uh, well, for me, um, when they say hazy weather, we're, we're, we're talking here some serious temperatures. Is this haziness because of the Saharan dust? It is because of the Saharan dust. Mm -hmm. um, when you mentioned the, the hot weather that we normally experience, it's typically because of the smoke. Mm -hmm. uh, so what we saw like in April and so on, it wasn't a Saharan dust, it was smoke from the forest fires over Belize, Central America, and the other countries around the area. Mm -hmm. and, and of course, in that time, it was a hot time of the year. So it was extremely hot and hazy, but it was more of the smoky type of haze. Okay. In our case, it's the actual dust that is causing the haze. Oh, mm -hmm. cool. So this is, I mean, this is being categorized as something historic for this region. Um, just looking at, at the broader picture here, you know, we seem to be having these once-in-a-lifetime um, experiences more and more often. From, from your perspective and, and looking at the science of it, is this just a, another spin-off of a changing environment due to climate change? Marlon, to be honest with you, I would not be able to, come to say that it's actually as a result of climate change. It could be, but it would need more investigation to say it's actually related to climate change. Um, I think it's very unwise to attribute everything right mm -hmm. away to climate change. Um, I know that it's something that people typically do, and it could be, I'm not saying it could not be a factor, yeah. but uh, certainly we haven't investigated it enough to know that it, is, that it is a result of climate change. 
Yeah. Mm. yeah. I'm looking at the 24 hour forecast and it says skies will be hazy with some cloudy spells. A few showers and isolated thunderstorms will occur mostly over central and inland areas this morning, decreasing later today. Then little or no rainfall is expected. Now, um, that, that uh, brings me to ask the question, are we getting the same intensity here in the city as in uh, all parts of the country? Are we on the same path or some folks are, uh, some parts of the, some municipalities are getting it worse than others? Um, in terms, you're referring to the haze, right? Yeah. Or, or to the answer, I don't know, sorry. Um, we are not re really able to go down to that fine detail. Uh, if, I wish we had the sensors, like I said, yeah. the air quality sensors at different stations to tell you, well, this area, the air quality is poorer than this one. Okay. Um, from looking at satellite pictures alone, it appears that it's uh, uniform across the country. Mm -hmm. But I would speculate, uh, it's not good to speculate, but I would say definitely that it could be more dense in some areas than others. Mm. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Now, I, I appreciate you acknowledging um, the, the fact that we can't measure the air quality because I think that was one of the interesting points coming out from the rest of the Caribbean. Um, just that they have uh, a new record in terms of the air quality that they're seeing, especially in, in, in particular spots. Mm -hmm. So what would be the effects of uh, if there is poor air quality um, that people may experience? Are you aware of that? Okay, um, to, just to comment on what you said, we can measure air quality. It's just that we don't have the sensors at the moment. Um, I, I believe there are a few private entities that have air quality sensors across the country. Oh. Um, I will look into that later on today and see what they are measuring. Yeah. But um, in terms of um, the official source, some also don't have the sensors at the moment. Um, in your other question, in terms of uh, air quality, uh, is, that, is that what you're asking? You seem to be losing your sound there a bit, Ronald. Hi, can you hear us? Yes, I'm hearing you. Okay, yes. So you were saying? Yes, I, I was asking for you to repeat the last part of your question. What kind of effects would people feel if there's low air quality? Oh, well, like I said, typically people who have um, uh, underlying symptoms of probably feel have difficulty breathing. Mm -hmm. uh, also affect your eyes. Um, I believe yeah. that could actually yeah. We know it. If it's actually, um, if it's very dense, yeah. and of course, um, skin allergies, itching, and that type of thing. Oh. You know, you're right in terms of uh, affecting eyes, because as I left home this morning, I could have, you know, I could have, I, I felt it. And yesterday, I'll act, I, I wanted to take a jog yesterday. I really wanted to, but, you know, something, to, something told me, you know what, don't do that. This is definitely not that type of weather, isn't it? I guess you are more sensitive, John, because of the fact that you are picking your eyes. But um, some people, I guess, could be more um, could be more susceptible. To that. Yeah. Oh, we seem to be losing some of the sound there. Yeah. Ronald. Can you hear me? Okay. Yes, it's just, it's dropping in and out. So let's 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 start to wrap it up then. What what type? Um, how long are we expecting this? And. Um, you said into next week, but we are expecting some showers in the next few days. Is that going to change anything? Um, the showers and the dust are like competing factors against each other. Mm -hmm. So whenever you have rain, it tends to disperse the, um, the dust itself. So if we do have showers, it will disperse it a bit. But like I mentioned before, um, it's a very massive um, area of dust. Mm -hmm. And we expect it to last at least through the end of the week. And it will eventually decrease, but will linger over us at least until next week, Monday, based on the forecast models I looked at. I want to say one thing, though, however, yes. um, before, I, before we leave. Sure. It is not a cause for panic. I know that um, there's a lot of panic on social media. Mm -hmm. People sometimes get um, worked up about certain things. Um, we have experienced those before. Again, this one is a bit more intense than the previous cases, but yeah. it shouldn't be a cause for panic. You shouldn't panic in any, any situation. But uh, especially this one, it's not a reason for people to panic and think this is it. Yeah. Yeah, so just in summary, once again, we're looking at a large dust plume that's over the entire Caribbean. It's moving um, north, and uh, we're going to be expecting uh, kind of the hazy looking brownish sky for mm -hmm. uh, the next few days into next week. Mm -hmm. Um, and yeah, we'll get beautiful sunsets, um, lessened activity just yeah. 
for now. I mean, for the duration of the dust storm. Yeah, definitely. Um, in our immediate area. You did say beautiful sunset. Um, they also say beautiful sunrise as well. But at the same time, if you've got um, respiratory problems, if uh, y this is definitely not one of those times you want to be wearing your mask, especially. Yeah. And you, of course, you want to be, you want to stay inside as much as possible, yeah. uh, if you could. And the air is dry, so stay hydrated. That's yes. a key part here. Ronald, anything else that we need to tell everyone? I, I appreciate you saying stay calm. Uh, it does look strange outside, but it's it's pretty much everything as usual. Uh, yes, um, yeah, I want to reiterate that. Uh, yeah. Like I said, do not panic, stay calm. And of course, now uh, the precautions that you already mentioned, no? Um, people are already, should be already wearing masks when outdoors, so mm -hmm. that's already a good thing. It should prevent um, you from further complications from the Saharan dust. Um, Stay indoors as much as possible if you're, again, if you are sensitive to this type of thing, if you have respiratory problem and that type of thing, no? Yeah. yeah. Um, and of course, stay tuned to the official sources and keep monitoring. All right. All right. Thank you so much, Ronald. Thank you. You're welcome. Take care. All right. All right. <laughs> uh, now you know exactly what the Saharan dust is, where it uh, derived from, and how long it's going to be over our area. And like, they, uh, like uh, the forecaster mentioned to you, if you've got respiratory problems, some underlying problems, then you want to make sure that you remain inside. All right, we're about to take a break, but when we come back, we will be having another conversation. This one is going to be the science of testing for virus. We'll be right back. This COVID update was brought to you by Foltech Systems, your technology center, where you'll come for the price, but stay for the service.